I'm Jim Wilson, even when I don't want to be. Um, and welcome to Pennsylvania. Now get out. That was actually, uh, for years I worked for uh, Pennsylvania State Parks, and that was actually an outdoor rec campaign that like went south really quick. Um, it was like, get, welcome to PA, now get out. And it was like the photograph of like, a, a guy in hiking boots. But it was at a time when there were so many people uh, moving in from New Jersey into Eastern PA uh, that it just it was ugly. <laughs> so, uh, so this is um, uh, just a, a quick uh, a review, really, of partnerships uh, that NERA has made in recent years and accomplishments of late here in Pennsylvania uh, in our mission of disciplined uh, research and study of these enigmatic stone structures and ceremonial landscapes throughout the Northeast. Uh, these partners uh, include uh, state and uh, tribal historic preservation offices, uh, county government, uh, academia, and local nonprofit organizations uh, with, with whom NERA has partnered um, for a better understanding of this phenomenon of CL CSLs here in PA. Uh, we've already acknowledged that where we are, I think, but it doesn't hurt to acknowledge it again. Um, we are in the ancestral homeland, of course, uh, the Lenape, uh, or Lenny Lenape, or Delaware Indians, or none of the above, I think, Evan might have. Um, but uh, you know, it, was, it occupied a huge piece of the Mid-Atlantic, uh, western Connecticut, southeastern New York, to include today's New York City, and at least western um, Long Island, all in New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, and the northeastern corner of Maryland, and the uh, Delaware Bay reach of the state of Delaware. Uh, there are no federal or, recon or state recognized tribes in PA, I think that was mentioned earlier. However, the uh, Delaware Tribe of Indians in Bartlesville does maintain a Tribal Historic Preservation Office at East Stroudsburg University in Monroe County, about an hour from here or less. Uh, and the Delaware Nation in Anadarko, Oklahoma, uh, in 2020 uh, opened a Tribal Historic Preservation Office in Allentown, uh, Lehigh County, in the Lehigh Valley where I live. And the Lenape Nation of Pennsylvania is a, a nonprofit, you know, cultural heritage organization whose members identify, many of them anyway, as descendants of Lenape or Delaware Indians. Uh, they maintain a cultural heritage center in Easton, uh, Pennsylvania, Northampton County, where I live. If you ever, uh, if your travels bring you back to PA or your travels home take you through the Lehigh Valley, you must uh, make a stop at the Sigel Museum. Uh, it's one of the finest local history museums you'll visit. Uh, it's the home of the Northampton County Historical and Genealogical Society, and they have wonderful exhibits on the natural and cultural history of the county and throughout the Lehigh Valley, including uh, the Lenape in Pennsylvania and what we now call ceremonial stone landscapes, but uh, sacred sites, you know, stone landscapes, which I've not seen interpreted in, in museums very often, if at all. Um, okay. So uh, just last month, um, the watershed or the uh, NERA <laughs> had a very big presence uh, in here in eastern Pennsylvania at the uh, Lehigh Valley Watershed Conference, which was held um, at Lehigh University in Bethlehem. Uh, we sponsored, NERA sponsored the keynote speaker as well as a number of other uh, presentations on indigenous connections to land and water resources uh, throughout the Lehigh Valley. Um, our sponsorship, uh, like I said, sponsored the keynote speaker, which was Dr. Julia King, anthropology chair from St. Mary's College of Maryland. Uh, she presented a session, uh, the keynote, on her work with the Rappahannock uh, tribe uh, in uh, Virginia, using archeology span uh, in landscape preservation, working with National Park Service, uh, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Um, Dr. King, uh, after her keynote, later in the morning, presented a session on the kinds of constructed ceremonial landscapes she works with in the coastal plain, where there are very few stones. So you build with what you got. Same concept, just made from unconsolidated sediments, like sand and gravel, cobbles, clays. Um, I followed her up with a, a brief presentation on the kinds of ceremonial landscapes we find away from the coast, here in the mountains. Um, made from stone. Uh, we did that both at the uh, conference and at the uh, a session at the Nurture Nature Center in Easton. So it was a practically a week-long uh, presentation of programs. Uh, NERA sponsored uh, several of them, including uh, a, a, a public film screening 
of a 2016 film. It was an award-winning film called The Water Gap, Return to the Homeland. Uh, it was a documentary um, documenting the experience of, of 14 uh, Lenape youth, tribal youth from the three North American tribes, uh, the two in Oklahoma and the one in Wisconsin. Ken Sandry was a big part of that program uh, in 2016. Uh, so we invited the filmmaker, who's a Choctaw Nation uh, gentleman in the, in the upper right-hand corner there, that's Kyle Kawika Harris. He's a member of the Choctaw Nation in Oklahoma. And with him, uh, behind him are three young uh, Delaware women from the Delaware tribe in uh, Anadarko. They're now in their early 20s. Um, six years ago, they were teenagers who were part of that uh, experience. So we, uh, our sponsorship helped bring them in uh, to spend the week with us, to screen the film, and to talk about their experiences um, here in their ancestral homeland you know, for the first time when they were just young kids. You know, today they live out in the Washita River watershed in Oklahoma, and it's a whole different landscape, a whole different world. So they just loved it, and we loved having them. Uh, it just so happened that the uh, film screening, it was on Sunday, March 13th, coincided with the closing reception of a big uh, watershed map exhibit called uh, Landmarks and Waterways that was on display at the Nurture Nature Center. It was 11 big scale maps, you can see them behind our Oklahoma friends, um, that interpreted the history of uh, drainages in the Lehigh and Delaware River watersheds. And it was just really fitting, I thought, to have you know, these beautiful Delaware faces and people standing in front of their namesake Delaware River watersheds uh, on, these, on this, uh, this day when we closed up the map presentation. Um, and we had lots of help, lots of support from NERA members. Uh, uh, Harvey Buford was there, Diane Plunkett. Um, Betsy Brewster was my right-hand person. I think she might still be with me. We were together that whole week, it seems. Um, and Martin Rapp from New Jersey. Uh, we reached over 400 people at the four different events. We collected a couple dozen uh, email signatures, or email signatures, email addresses. And um, there are some people, uh, we, I know there's at least four Pennsylvania members who joined as a result of uh, the, uh, attending the, the, this near sponsored event. Um, and I, I think there's at least three here today. Uh, Hansel, D'Souza, and the cars are here. Yeah, the cars are here. So uh, that was great. We got uh, some more uh, on our team here. Um, let's see. So as uh, you know, an advocate for uh, the preservation of these ceremonial stone landscapes, uh, NIR has made some you know, really key connections uh, with the two government agencies that really oversee artifacts, landscape artifacts, and that's the State and Tribal Historic Preservation Offices. So in 2020, we first met with SHPO archaeologists at the Ole Hill site in Berks County, um, documented that site, mapped the site, and later that summer, uh, it was entered into the Pennsylvania Archaeological Site Survey, which is the state's uh, database of archaeological sites. Um, that was in March of 2020. About a week later, COVID shut the world down, so we were able to regroup not until last September, when I had a great day, the middle photo up top there, um, with these four cultural resource management professionals. Uh, from left to right is uh, Caitlin Lucas. She's the tribal, the Delaware Nation Tribal Historic Preservation Officer in Allentown. Next to her is Caitlin, I'm sorry, uh, Taylor Napoleon with Shippo, who's here with us today. Uh, and then in front of uh, the next woman that's sort of speaking to um, Taylor, is uh, Dr. Uh, Allison Mickle. She's an anthropologist, uh, an archaeologist and anthropology professor at Lehigh. And then in the background is um, Casey uh, Hansen, right? Yeah, Casey Hansen, who's a colleague of uh, Taylor's with Shippo. Uh, so that was great. That was last uh, September. We looked at five different sites, documented five different sites in uh, Northampton and Monroe counties. And then last month, uh, a week after the Watershed Conference, we teamed up again, this time um, with Taylor, um, uh, Casey, and then two of their colleagues uh, from the SHPO office. We spent two days uh, in Monroe and Pike counties documenting nine different sites. And we were joined, uh, the young man in the orange hat, the lower photo, is an archaeologist with uh, National Park Service at Delaware Water Gap National Rec Area. We, we sampled, or we documented some sites there. Um, so that was, uh, Great to you know, get all these folks on board. Um, I had the great honor as a result of our partnership um, last year 
Taylor at the end of 22 asked me if I would write, contribute an article uh, to their annual report uh, on our, our, you know, our constructed stone landscape partnership. So that was really great. Those uh, Ole Hills uh, features get a lot of mileage. Those photographs, that's one of those there on the cover of the, uh, the annual report. And then this is the last uh, slide. I know I stand between you guys and happy hour, so I don't want to <laughs> keep anybody. Um, so in 2018, Northampton County received funding from the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission to develop a historic and cultural assets plan for the county. Um, I work for Northampton County. I work for the Parks Department. We manage 22 parks uh, that encompass over 2,200 acres. A lot of them have historic assets and structures on them, including uh, ceremonial stone landscapes. So from that perch, if you will, I uh, was on the steering committee and was able to um, uh, promote and lobby for and get ceremonial stone landscapes included in the, this assets plan with recommendations to support their protection and work with partners to map them and identify them and collaborate with experts to uh, you know, create documentation and uh, educational outreach. So that was uh, pretty exciting. Um, it's just a, a recommendation. It's not a, docu it's not a regulatory document or part of an ordinance but it's recommendations for the 38 municipalities in Northampton County um, you know, to uh, preserve, protect, and interpret their, their historical resources. Um, and that's pretty much it, although I did want to ask uh, Taylor, if just from your seat, if you wanted to share a few words about your thoughts and on our, our days together over the last year or so. many a times and never had any idea. So over the past two years I've been learning and Jim's been really helpful with uh, keeping me on task too. He's very <laughs> consistent, which is good. Um, things sometimes fall through the cracks, but it's been great to actually physically get out there and see them. And the trip that we had gone on last month um, was really nice to see different examples. You start to see patterns and the environments that they're in and, you know, when there's more walls versus when there's more cairns. And it, it's just really helpful to kind of see those patterns start emerging. So um, we're still, in terms of the SHPO, we're still at that kind of data gathering and learning stage. We want to ultimately be able to give some guidance to our cultural resource management professionals when they're out there doing regulatory surveys and they come across the, we want to be able to give them some guidance on how they should be reported and, uh, and talk about them to preservation. Thanks, Jim, for oh, uh, thank you, Taylor. Thank helping me out with all this stuff. I really appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, it's been fun. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, sure.